Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.2 concept and uses of classification systems. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 1.2 you need to be able to understand how organisms are classified based on their physical features, describe the term species and the binomial system of naming species and construct and use dichotomous keys. For the extended course you also need to know that classification systems reflect evolutionary relationships and how base sequences of DNA are used to classify organisms. There are millions of different organisms on Earth and biologists sort them into groups or classify them based on the features that they share. For example, mammals are warm-blooded, have four limbs, produce milk and give birth to their young, so organisms that possess these features will be classified as such. At the smallest and most specific level, organisms are grouped into species. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring, and members of the species are almost identical in their anatomy, physiology and behaviour. For example, although house cats look very different to one another due to human intervention or selective breeding, they're still of the same species as they're able to breed successfully. Each species must be named in such a way that the name is recognised all over the world. The binomial system of naming organisms is an internationally agreed system in which the scientific name of an organism is made up of two parts, showing the genus and the species. Genus is a category of classification that ranks above species and consists of closely related species. For example, the Felis genus consists of six small wild cats as well as the domestic cat, Felis catus. These seven species are very closely related but they're classified as individual species as they cannot produce offspring. The name of the genus, which means the generic name, always starts with a capital letter, while the name of the species, the specific name, always starts with a lowercase letter. In order to classify or group an unfamiliar organism, dichotomous keys are used. By following the key and making suitable choices along the way, it's possible to identify the organism correctly. You need to be able to interpret and make simple dichotomous keys based on easily identifiable features. Let's work through one for the different classes of vertebrates, or the animals that possess a backbone, birds, reptiles, mammals, amphibians and fish. First you need to study the groups to work out what they have in common and what makes them different from others. The first question should be based on a feature that will split the group into two. For example, is it warm-blooded or cold-blooded? For each of the two subgroups formed, a further question based on the features of some of that subgroup should then be asked. For example, does it have limbs? Since fish have now been singled out, no further questions need to be asked. We should now continue the process until each group has been separated from the others. Now we have the basis for our dichotomous key, all we need to do is reformat it so it's less of a flowchart and more of a series of questions. Here's another example of a dichotomous key that can be used to identify laboratory glassware. Pause the video and familiarise yourself. OK, so that's everything you need to know for the core section, so we'll move on to look at the extended content. The classification of organisms helps us to understand the evolutionary relationships that exist between them. For example, the arrangement and number of bones in the limbs of humans, lizards, bats, birds and whales is almost exactly the same in all five. According to evolutionary theory, which we'll cover in detail later on in the course, these similarities in structure hints at a common ancestry, particularly as the animals use their limbs for such different things as running, flying and swimming. If they were completely unrelated, you might expect their bone structures to be more different. If it's discovered that organisms share a common ancestor, this will be reflected in how they are classified. For example, some animals like the pangolin and armadillo were once mistakenly grouped together based on their similar appearance, but their lack of a common ancestor means their classification is now different. Finally, you need to know how DNA sequencing is used to classify organisms. The use of DNA has revolutionised the process of classification. Most organisms contain chromosomes made up of strands of DNA which contains genetic information. Each species has a unique sequence of bases in its DNA, making it identifiable and distinguishable from other species. This is particularly useful when different organisms are very similar in appearance and internal structure. In such cases, scientists study their genetics and if differences are found, they will be classified as separate species. DNA sequencing has also helped us to better understand how species are linked through evolution. For example, humans are more closely related to chimpanzees than orangutans as the base sequences in our DNA are more similar. Our genetic closeness to chimps suggests we share a more recent ancestor. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.2, classification systems. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 1.3, features of organisms.